Hey guys, I wanted to open the comment section to talk about modern cards and where we see modern as a format, where we see it as a price point. It seems that modern, right now, modern is the cheapest it will ever be for a lot of these staples. Um, anything printed in Modern Masters 2015 will start or has already started going up. Uh, now that Christmas is over, uh, what happens is people are you know coming back, they have more money to buy magic cards with, and all of this kind of makes sense. But uh, if you take a look at something like Affinity, uh, Modern Masters, the original Modern Masters, prices have already started to go up. And that makes sense because we already had Modern Masters 2015. So around this time uh, last year, Modern Masters, the original, went up in price. Around this time, around June, I fully, fully expect Modern Masters 2015 cards to go up in price. Uh, if it follows the same trend. So anything printed in Modern Masters 2015 should and will go up in price around the summertime or even before then, right? During modern season. Now, one of the most crazy parts about um, modern as a format, in my opinion, is the ban list. The ban list is very interesting from many perspectives, but from mostly from an MTG Finance perspective, because you can have cards like Bitter Blossom, Wild Nakato, cards that were banned and they, they become unbanned. And they spike in price overnight, but then it turns out they were really bad cards. Or they didn't affect, no, not that they were bad cards. I mean, come on, these cards are really good. But they don't have the deck to support it. And the main reason is because you're fighting against a deck called Splinter Twin. I think Splinter Twin is a real problem uh, for modern. Uh, I think it's a problem because it's a turn four consistent win in the correct colors that you want to be in. You want red for burn, you want blue for counter spells, and your combo pieces are in red and blue. Now you might splash black for Colgan's command, you might splash you know, a different color for uh, different cards against different decks, but at the end of the day, you are pulling off a turn four win. Uh, when you can play it whenever you want to play it. So as long as you have the cards in hand and you have a cryptic command or a remand or something, you can wait and turn turn six to protect it. Uh, and it, it kind of helps that both the uh, creature combo pieces are instant speed. So why, how would aggro really compete against that? Like why Nakato? Like cool, it's a really good card, but it's gonna get lightning bolted. Uh, or even, you know, Bitter Blossom. Bitter Blossom, I love as a card, it's one of my favorite cards. Cards I play in Legacy, but okay, cool. You made some tokens. I'm just going to not care, and I'm going to kill you with my combo. That is why I feel like Stoneforge Mystic will be unbanned very soon because she does not do enough against that particular matchup. Uh, that matchup is just too strong for Stoneforge Mystic. If you're paying, playing a t turn two Stoneforge and you spend your next turn playing the equipment that you found, assuming it's a sword. If it's a battle scroll, I guess you could send that in play too. And you're tapping out. So if your opponent is on the play, your turn, and it's at the end of your turn when you tap out and you put out your battle scroll, whatever you're doing, uh, they play twin, or they play uh, Pestamite, and then they put play twin the next turn. Very difficult. Um, and remember, at the same time, they're just like Gitaxian probing as well as visions and just doing stuff with their deck, manipulating their deck so they can draw into a combo. Remember, when you play at a GP or you play at a high level event, you have to pretty much go undefeated. So to say that something like a Wild Nakato or a Bitter Blossom or even Stone Forge, can compete against every possible Splinter Twin combination, you're gonna lose. Uh, the Splinter Twin is kind of like Card 5 Vanguard where you just get, sometimes they just combo out. They just beat you. And there's very little you can do to interact with that deck. By definition, that deck doesn't want you to interact with it because it has counter spells up. And it doesn't even use Mana Leak or any of that stuff because it has better cards in that. Remand is in particularly interesting as a card for that deck because it counters your spell and you draw a card. <laughs> so it's not even counter spell, it's like tempo. All they need is to put you a step or two behind and they're, 
they will protect their combo and they're off they go. Uh, Amulet Bloom is a weaker combo in my opinion, but it's also, it's kind of the same. Uh, I think it's weaker and it's less, it's inconsistent, but it can win faster. So if you draw the correct combo pieces, you can win very fast, even before a twin. And then you have Ataka Red, uh, which again, Stoneforge Mystic, what are you going to do against that? Like you're coming, you're attacking with all these goblins. Maybe you block one, but then like you got got to put your equipment in play. Like Battle Skull, just too expensive. Five is too much. Even if you get on turn three, Twin does not care that you're playing Battle Skull and putting it in play. Twin is going to fly over you or just going to make enough tokens that they will just kill you. So the state of modern right now, I feel like is uh, based on two decks, Splinter Twin and Amulet Bloom. Oh uh, no, two, three decks, Splinter Twin, Amulet Bloom, and Ataka Red. Those three decks have made it very difficult for me to imagine aggro being very good. Maybe Bloodbraid Elf, if it comes back, it'll be good enough. Pod, I think Pod would be good enough, but that's kind of a combo piece too. So like, what are you doing? You're introducing a, you know, another combo uh, piece into it. Um, Treasure Cruise, I, like the Delver decks were very dominant because uh, they present, they had counter spells to mess with you. If you were a twin, now you know when I look at what decks are, uh, and I look at the prices of these cards, now would be the time to buy. Like Affinity would be a very good time to pick up some of the uh, pieces that just were reprinted. Uh, no, not Affinity. Uh, what was it? Poison. That's probably the deck I would start with. I would start with uh, the Poison Counter deck and Infect deck. Uh, I think that's probably the best deck to pick up right now. The only cards that I can see being a potential um, difficult, I mean, anything in Modern Master 2015, it is today a very good time to pick up on that because it should go up in price at least by summertime. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.